It all started with this man called Samuel, who had been relieved of his duty at his workplace for exposing some group of guys who had been defrauding customers of their money. All he wanted was justice for being sacked for no good cause. Uche is his friend, who is also the lawyer in charge of his case in court to make an appeal. But Uche wants him to know that they have lost the case. So then, what about his house, car, and everything he was about to lose? Samuel has three children, Chichi, Emeka, and Ibube to cater for. But it has not been easy raising these kids without a job, especially when the children take the little they have for granted. J.D., his wife, has always been a supportive and caring wife. She literally took up the responsibilities of everything ever since he lost his job. All he just had to do was to take the children to school and other little help at home. It got so bad that he has become the talk in the neighborhood with his debts. And what do you expect from a man with no job and a handful of responsibilities? He wouldn't mind trying everything that could potentially earn a penny, including gambling, but rather, he accumulated more debt of 15,000 Naira. Things weren't getting funny any longer. Samuel also has an interview the same day, and with the long-awaiting applicants for the job, wasn't convincing. At least trying is the only option. Unfortunately for him, he was already disqualified even before being given an opportunity due to his age. Life was really becoming frustrating for a young, smart, and hard-working man like Samuel. This was not the life he once dreamt of himself and his children growing up in the trenches. Where did he get it wrong in being an honest man? At least he shouldn't die of starvation. But what did they say about unconditional love for a man when he cannot provide? He was still trying to express himself when the landlord came in. Samuel still owes a two years rent. He was tired of begging. Becoming ferocious was his only option. On the other side, Modestus is a godfather in his den. Everyone who knows him was afraid of him because he doesn't joke with his money. One of his clients and his wife had some transactions worth 5 billion naira. And in order to successfully carry out the plan without traces by the government, Modestus is the man they could trust. He wanted 10% of the bargain, his client and his wife weren't comfortable any longer with the noise they were hearing from behind, but Modestus tried to convince them that they were safe. He wasn't happy with the noise that scared his clients. He must deal with the situation right now. And like I said, nobody gets away with his money, and to him, the wages of sin is death. He ordered OK to kill the young man who was one of his boys for stealing his money. How does Modestus safe keep the laundered money without traces from the government? He has a perpetrator, Marcus, inside the bank who put the money into dormant accounts without the owners of these accounts knowing until it was transferred back into the client's account. Meanwhile, JD was already getting tired of her husband's inability to put himself together after three years of losing his job. Opie, her friend, had been advising her to leave the house together with the kids for her own safety and sanity. Her friend just left when she got a call that her husband put her as a referee in order to lend 50,000 Naira. She is beginning to think, Opie may be right. But what kind of advice can you get from a friend like Opie who doesn't have a man in her life? Talk more about getting married. But can we also say that Samuel is a lazy man? He came to see his friend. He needs a loan of 1 million Naira to start over again. Uchi doesn't have such an amount, but advised him to go to the bank with the collateral of his house in the village. He believes Sammy will bounce back with his passion in the crypto business. This is what true friends are. Sometimes it's better to start with a man who has nothing and grow with him. Then you could test his strength in adversity. JD had decided to leave with the kids to her parents' house. Her father is a retired general he understood everything his daughter was passing through, and she is always welcome to his house. Samuel remembers that he once had an account which is dormant now. He should try if he could secure a loan. He was directed to the branch manager, but his request was not granted since he has no reasonable collateral. Samuel tried to convince the manager when the security men came in to walk him out. The manager decided to check his account when he saw 500 million naira in his account. 
But how did this happen? Samuel's account was one of the ten dormant accounts Marcus transferred 500 million naira each with the 5 billion naira given to him by Modestus. Samuel was shocked to have such an amount in his account, but he composed himself. He was no longer treated like the masses, but as a respected citizen of the country. Samuel ordered that 400 million naira was transferred into another of his accounts. That same moment, Marcus got a call from his hacker that one of the dormant accounts had been reactivated. He was trying to figure out how it happened when Samuel and the manager came out, and from the conversation, Marcus knew that it was Samuel. Samuel already got a call from the bank that his family had packed out of the house. Now what do we say about the last gasp of a drowning man? Only if J.D. could be patient enough for just an hour or two would she reap the fruits of her patience. Samuel came out to meet his landlord and tenants waiting for him. They thought he was running away too. Samuel must pay his debts before leaving. He literally owes every tenant in the compound. This was what his life was about before good luck came knocking. But should we call this good luck? This time he paid everyone he owed. Samuel is a millionaire now and his friend who was with him through thick and thin was the first he could remember. He narrated his encounter at the bank with the alert, Uche was still in doubt until he saw real cash in the bag. But as a lawyer, he knew it was not appropriate to take such money. Samuel wouldn't want to hear such because his honesty landed him into penury until the sudden bank alert. It's time to hit the town and paint it red. You shouldn't blame a man who has been through hell and hit such a jackpot. He should cool his head first before thinking of how to invest. It's really been a long since these men had such a wonderful treat. And from there, straight to the club. Uche seems to be the money spender here. And as it stands, money isn't the problem. The problem is how to spend it. Marcus was also at the club that night to cool his head when Modestus marched into the club. He already got an info of Marcus' whereabouts. Modestus doesn't waste his time on traitors. Everyone just watches as they take him away. Uche was still sleeping after a long night when Samuel came to his hotel room. There was a problem. Modestus already knew about them and his only hiding place is at his cousin's place until the situation calms down. Samuel got the location of his brother, but it wouldn't be easy to see the number one man John Tamanta without proper investigation. Samuel had to deposit 10 million naira in order to guarantee his safety. Jantamanta was so happy to see his brother after many years, and this called for a big celebration. Samuel was smart enough to have left because it did not cost Modestus anything to find Uche. He wants to know where Samuel is. But Uche tried everything possible not to expose his friend even under duress, but he got the beating of his life as a warning signal. Samuel already had all he wanted to start back his crypto business when Uchi called. He has been hospitalized as they speak. Samuel needs to get his family to safety if he wants them alive. At that time, Opie and J.D. were together talking. All Opie did was to criticize Samuel for being irresponsible when his call came in. She wouldn't let J.D. pick her calls. Samuel then sent a message and she deleted the message without even reading it. The kids were outside making a video when the gang members kidnapped Chi Chi. Emeka was smart enough to have picked the vehicle's plate number on camera. The children ran inside to tell their mother what had happened to Chi Chi. Samuel also got the news in no time. He can't be hiding when his family is in danger, he had to tell his cousin. Jantamanta wouldn't let him go like that without some protection so he ordered two of his best men to follow him. Samuel now drives a high-class mob. He has to talk to his wife first and ask for her forgiveness for putting the family in harm's way. His intention was to invest the 500 million naira in his crypto mining and return the money back to the bank. He must meet with J.D.'s father, who was once a military personnel, to intervene with his experience. Samuel was in his in-law's house, but his mother-in-law wasn't happy with him, but his father-in-law is a gentleman. You shouldn't expect to see such a huge amount in your account and call it luck, because when you lose everything you have by taking what is not yours, everyone will say that you're a greedy person. Samuel knew he messed up, but his father told him not to worry, he will track them. 
Samuel thinks Jantamanta can also help with his resources. He brought him to meet with the general, and as a Rasta man with his beliefs, the young and the old have equal rights, but Samuel wouldn't allow him disrespect his father-in-law. The general already found out the hideout of the kidnappers and their pictures. Jantamanta knew Modestus. They go way back together in the jungle. Jantamanta already had a dispute with Modestus, and now is the right time to kill him. All they need is a concrete plan which he already knows. J.D. loves her husband so much, she wants him to be safe. They were talking when his phone rang. It was Modestus. Samuel is a smart man. He told Modestus that he was ready to bring back the money, but he wants 10% of the money as an eyewitness. Modestus agreed, and they agreed to meet in his house. It was a good lead for them. Jantamanta already gathered his squad and told them what to do. On the flip side, Modestus wouldn't underestimate even a cockroach. He wants them to remain alert in case of any foreign move. Samuel showed up with the money, but there was a little problem. The money was in his crypto wallet, which he couldn't convert into cash instantly. Modestus doesn't understand such a language and asked OJ to confirm it. Samuel also tried to remind him of the 10% agreement when he got a very dirty slap for such a statement. Samuel was still trying to regain himself when Jantamanta called to speak with Modestus. They knew each other, and he wanted him to release the girl. Modestus had no choice now. He would release the girl to avoid problems with Jantamanta. But what pissed him off was that Samuel had already removed the 10% of the money when OJ confirmed. Modestus, Fred the girl. But he wouldn't accept the missing 50 million naira. Samuel must be dealt with. Chichi met with Grandpa while Jantamanta's boys were already on standby. Samuel was already taken to the uncompleted house where Modestus gives his traitor special treatment, but things were beginning to take another shape with Modestus and his men aware of what was happening. There was an open fire in no time as Modestus and his men were taken down one after the other. Samuel had already escaped, but Modestus followed him. He must die for starting this war in the first place. But luck came to him for the second time. Modestus couldn't survive the sword he soiled his hands with, so he died by the sword. At last, the family was reunited again. Who said Samuel isn't a lucky man? You see, life is all about risk. If he had returned the money, many would call him a stupid man. If he lost his family or had died in the process, many will call him a greedy man. And now that he is a millionaire, many say he is a courageous man. Life is a two-sided coin. Nobody is perfect. Thanks for watching. Please comment your thoughts and also like and share this video for more super amazing videos that we are bringing to you. And if you're watching from our YouTube channel, you can also subscribe and turn on your notification for more. Thank you.